in the last video we learned about friction and we came to know that friction is an opposing force it is something that opposes motion and comes into play when one body slides or rolls over the surface of another body and acts at the point of contact between the two surfaces okay and where does friction act it always acts at the point of contact between the two surfaces and don't forget friction is a contact force it is an example of a contact force with this knowledge about friction what we are going to discuss in this video is the effects of friction in this video so to say we are going to discuss the different kinds of effect that friction produces so the first effect that we are going to discuss about friction is friction opposes motion this is something that we've actually already discussed okay for example if we let a ball roll on the ground what happens is the ball moves gradually slows down and eventually it comes to a stop this is true for whatever kind of a ball now why is that so it is because if the ball is moving in this direction rolling in this direction what happens is at the point of contact between the surface of the ball and the ground there's a force of friction which acts it comes into play all right and this force of friction is always directed opposite to the direction of motion of the body which in this case is the ball so therefore this friction opposes motion and thereby the ball comes to a stop now to give you another example you take a toy car whatever kind of a toy car it'll do i managed to find only this so you push this toy car and what we see is it travels a certain distance and it eventually comes to a stop now why is that so that is because there is a force of friction that comes into play between the tires between the wheels of the car and the ground so if the car is moving in this in this direction a force of friction comes into play in the opposite direction of course between again the wheels of the car and the ground remember you are cycling on a level land say for example you are cycling on the play field of the school so what happens is when you stop pedaling when you stop pedaling your cycle will move for a certain distance and then after it stops it slows down and it stops why again because the force of friction comes into play between the tires of your cycle your bicycle and the ground of course in the opposite direction if you are moving this way so to say the force of friction acts in the opposite direction when i push a coin the coin moves a certain distance and it comes to a stop it comes to a stop now why is that so there's a force of friction coming into play between the lower surface of the coin and the paper the surface of the paper so in all of these examples that we've discussed what we see is whenever a body moves be it sliding or rolling an opposing force comes into play which slows the body down or altogether brings it to a stop and this opposing force is what we are seeing is the force of friction so remember force of friction opposes motion this therefore is the first effect of your force of friction now to discuss the second effect let me read it out first friction always acts in a direction which is opposite to the direction of motion now this second effect also we've actually already discussed and this second effect and the first effect are basically one and the same because remember an opposing force a force that opposes motion has to be always in a direction opposite to the direction of motion okay so here is the ball rolling or here in this direction the car is moving where will friction act friction will always act in a direction opposite to the direction of motion the very next instant you roll the ball towards your left hand side force of friction will now act towards your right hand side 
Here, the ball was rolling towards our right hand side. Force of friction acts in the left hand side direction. So remember, friction being an opposing force, it always acts in a direction which is opposite to the direction of motion of the body. Now to discuss the third effect, the third effect is friction always remember produces heat energy. Now to give an example of this, when we start rubbing our palms, what happens is after some time our hands start feeling warm. Why is this? This is because when we rub our palms, the force of friction acts between our palms. Okay, one of the palms is moving over the surface of another palm. So what happens is a force of friction acts between the surfaces of our palms, of our hands, so to say. So therefore, it is this force of friction which produces heat, remember. Now to give another example of friction producing heat, we take a matchbox and a matchstick. Next, what we do is we rub this matchstick, of course, on the rough surface of the matchbox. So let us do that. And what we see is, we see a fire is lit. Now, why did this happen? This happened because when the matchstick moved over the rough surface of the matchbox, what happens is a force of friction comes into play between their surfaces and thereby friction produced heat and we had the fire lit. And finally, we now come to the fourth effect of friction that is friction causes wear and tear. To help you understand the fourth effect, friction causes wear and tear, let me give you an example of an eraser. Say for example, you buy a new eraser. But with time, as you go on using the eraser to erase the unwanted stuffs, okay, what you see is the eraser loses its freshness, it loses its newness, like this eraser that you are seeing right now. And also, the eraser starts getting shorter and shorter. So what is happening? As we go on using the eraser, what we do is we go on rubbing the eraser on the surface of the paper. We go on every time we go on rubbing the eraser on the surface of the paper. That is also why we call the eraser a rubber. So as we go on rubbing, every time we go on rubbing, what happens is a force of friction comes into play every time we rub. And because of this force of friction, what happens is your eraser starts wearing out because of which it loses it starts losing its freshness and starts getting shorter and shorter another example say you have a brand new t-shirt and you like it so much okay so you go on wearing it but every time you wear it it gets dirty so you also have to wash it so with time this process of you wearing the t-shirt and every time washing the t-shirt goes on. So what is, as time passes, what is seen is your t-shirt starts getting old. That is, it loses its freshness again. It loses its shine. Now, why is that so? That is because every time we wear the t-shirt or every time we wash the t-shirt, the cloth used to make the t-shirt gets rubbed because of which friction comes into play and that friction causes wear and tear because of which the t-shirt starts getting old and sometimes it tears up also. You can also take the example of a duster. Now at the beginning of the academic year, what happens is you get a new duster but by the end of the year, okay, what happens is the duster wears out the duster becomes very old and the soft uh, part of the duster sometimes also comes out now why is that happening that is happening because we every day we go on rubbing the duster on the board so that rubbing of the duster on the board gives rise to friction which causes wear and tear of the duster because of which the duster gets old all right and loses its 
freshness loses its shine so these are the four effects of friction class 6 friction opposes motion friction always acts in a direction which is opposite to the direction of motion friction produces heat friction causes wear and tear hope you all will remember